What's up everybody, welcome back to another very special episode here of my YouTube vids, courtesy of the Backmarkers F1 blog and podcast, of course, that's why they have the nice graphic up there, but this one's a very special one because I'm presenting my Honest F1 2011 review. By some miracle, I'm actually still in a country that actually sells these games, and uh, I could get my hands on it a bit early because I tricked Steam into thinking I was an American, because for some reason they released it early. Here you see the nice little intro, they, they did some good job um, doing the intro, it's pretty cool. Um, using um, They used their promo vid basically, uh, where they uh, recreated moments that happened. Uh, which is pretty nice, pretty well done, um, their uh, intro. But yeah, F1 2011, much anticipated game. There was a lot of hope that everything was going to be better, that it's going to be a whole new world, and, and it basically is. Um, as you guys know, here you go, the Red Rose Russian moment. Um, <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. Uh, you know, had to get my mandatory Petrov, uh, wasn't a bash in. Um, but yeah, did a lot of work, Codemasters, they were hyping it up, I was telling everybody, don't believe the hype, it's always the same with these game companies, and, well, much of their selling point was, yeah, there's now curves and DRS and Pirelli tires, well, like, duh, this is an F1 game, that's what F1 2011 all about, would be bad if that wasn't in, there you see Alonso's great start in Catalonia, I like how they did this little intro video, and I, I figured I would bring it completely, safety car is in, uh, I don't know, I didn't get my panties up in a bunch like a lot of people did. It, it's a cool feature. Uh, I like it, but uh, to say it's, it's that important, I don't know. I had one safety car period. I played, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 hours total by now. Um, had one safety car, and it was pretty well done. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was like, I think we spent two laps behind it. Um, you have like a lot of auto braking so you don't pass anyone, which is pretty cool. I didn't really see how you need to manage your tires. But uh, of course today I'm going to try to give you an in-depth uh, review of F1 2011, uh, everything F1, uh, seeing so there won't be a lot of real F1 talk, tune into the Back Marcus F1 podcast for that, this is just purely focusing on the game, uh, but one thing I was really looking forward to, and you heard uh, Codemasters talk about this all the time, the handling is so much improved, you worked so much on the suspension, I was a bit skeptical, because let's face it, last year the handling was, there was no handling, it was basically on rails, uh, you had the brake slam trick to save your ass from spinning out, um, the, the rear end wasn't twitchy at all, uh, even, even playing without assists and traction control. Um, I found it, you know, very dumbed down uh, car. So here you go into, this is a new feature, this is the career mode lounge. You see the paddock there, it's, it's very well done. Uh, you got a nice little selection of a helmet, so that was something people were asking about. It's a bit of a shame they didn't uh, put in the um, real helmets of the guys. Uh, last year, at least, I think they had some. Uh, real helmets, but it's a vast improvement. You got like 20 some helmets to choose from some cool some absolutely gay But you know nice for that. I love that one the one I selected there. So it's pretty nice Anthony Davidson's helmets is in there uh, that little preview scheme. I guess yeah, it's a nice little touch You know you see the the next Grand Prix there. Uh, I, I haven't done career I just you know wanted to show you uh, how what it looks like um, So yeah, pretty straightforward menu, but this is the big new part you got emails now um, you know, it, it, it helps the immersion a bit. Uh, I think it's it's a good addition. Um, you get emails from everyone, you know, talking. You get press clippings after races and stuff. Uh, I heard. I haven't uh, done a career race yet. Um, so there, you know, the standings. It's pretty much the same. But now, you know, there's a little bit more lively. You get a view of the paddock. There's real drivers passing by. Uh, there you can see Rubinho in probably his last season in F1, <laughs> um, giving a little interview. So, yeah, it's, it's nice. Uh, career mode is, is looking good. Uh, you can start with the Williams, Force India, and then the three new teams. Uh, Williams and Force India, of course. The other ones don't. Uh, but, of course, it's all about the handling. You know, that's, that's what the main point is. I was a bit afraid uh, that uh, Codemaster was going to focus too much on the bling-bling. You know, career mode, nice. Uh, you know, making the paddock. It's nice that you're actually in the paddock now. Uh, they modeled all these things, so it's stupid not to use it. Uh, there's a multiplayer mode, of course. You got split screen now for those who like that. Uh, Co-op championship, that's a big new point. Haven't tested it out. I heard the AI is quite buggy on it. Even putting it on Legend um, is apparently pretty bad. Uh, the Legend AI sucks on co-op. It's okay in uh, Grand Prix mode, though. Uh, but I, I read it on the forums. Haven't tested it myself. Online, it's pretty much the same. Uh, session info, you can now spectate if you come in a bit late. Um, so that's a good move. The cameras aren't too great, but that's going to be fun for people doing league races. You could have one dedicated spectator or something, and he can toggle between the cars. Um, so that, that's pretty nice. That's well done. Uh, sadly, the replay system is, is still uh, 
balls, but um, overall, you know, online is very similar to last year, except, of course, the co-op championship when you can go with a buddy and uh, race a whole career, uh, or at least a whole season against the AI. Um, time trial, proving grounds, that's now time trial and time attack. Time trial, uh, which is great about time trial, is it doesn't seem to, I've only done like two time trial laps, but it doesn't seem to have the crazy amount of grip it had last year to make it arcade mode. Um, I tried it, you know, it does have the optimal circumstances, optimal tire temperature and all that jazz, uh, brake temperature, but uh, I was only like one or two seconds up on, um, I tested this in Monza, one or two seconds up on my time I did in career mode uh, for qualifying, so that can be explained by better, you know, tire temps and track uh, things, so it's not like you're seven seconds faster on time trial than other. There's time attack mode, which we glanced over, but that's basically a scenario it's like uh, in the wet in a McLaren in uh, Australia or something. Uh, you have the whole updated season, so um, Bahrain is out. Uh, there is the India track, there's the Nürburgring, and then there's all the familiar tracks from uh, last year, of course. But like I said, it's all about the handling, so I'm going to take you guys through um, GP, uh, Grand Prix, with uh, Mark Webber, a Red Bull, see if we can beat Fingerboy for once. Uh, you know, give him a boost for next year, because he resigned, of course. A new little addition, a little bit of bling, nothing special, you see the guys stepping in the car, I, I guess it's fun. Um, garage looks exactly the same, uh, really no changes to the garage, well, not exactly the same, but all the options are the same, you know, the quick setup, uh, the go to track via the engineer, here you have your tires, um, selection, and you have the, um, the screen, live timing thing, it's exactly the same as last year, track info. Uh, and the setup, that's a bit of a shame. I was hoping the setup was going to be more complex. But it's that is literally exactly the same as last year. I haven't really played around with setups a lot. You know, I'm sure on, on Race Department, for example, there's going to be great, great setups posted uh, by uh, guys like Victor Anderson and uh, Andrew Bortz, uh, who should be um, keeping the vids flowing on this channel while I am away. Um, might hear me doing some comms on it, but Andrew Bortz, of course, uh, pro driver, better than me, I can admit that, uh, <laughs> not too proud to admit it. One thing has changed, well, not that much, it's just, uh, the fuel, uh, fuel management is more important in the race now, and it also encourages you, especially the Pirellis, it encourages you to do longer races. In F1 2011, I usually did 20% races in the career mode, because, you know, you just have one stop anyway, but here in the longer races, the Pirellis really come into their effect, can do a two stop three stop one stop you know uh, how long is my stint on the mediums that's a lot of fun and they also limited your choices you can only do 20 50 or 100 percent there's no more of these in betweenies you know uh, which is a shame i would have liked to have the 75 percent race because that's about an hour worth of racing you can fit that in you know like 100 percent race in singapore that's two hours or something that's a bit big another big shame is pit lane control we were announced a lot more pit lane control well, they may basically dumbed it down. Yeah, you have steering on the pit entry and pit exit. Uh, that was just, you know, practice lab just to show you that. Um, but the, the pit limiter is gone. You can just dive into the pits full pelt and the game will do it automatically for you. That's a big shame. They didn't uh, give an option at least to have it manual. Uh, I like that last year where you had to, like, break it exactly the right time. You could win two, three seconds by, you know, practicing the pit entry correctly. Um, against someone who didn't, you know, there's penalties you could have for pit lane speeding. Um, it's a bit of a shame. So they fully dumbed it down. Um, yeah, you have a bit more control driving in. It's not autopilot anymore. You have a bit of steering. But once you're in the pit lane, it's all automatic. Don't have to brake for your pit box anymore. Um, <clears throat> you can't pit request anymore, but it's not necessary either. Because whenever you dive into pits, the pit crew will be ready. Uh, and you can select your tires. I had a bit of trouble figuring that out, but you can still select... Uh, the tires you want to have put on, so you can decide on the fly uh, which strategy you want. So we are on board with Mark Webber. Um, I I didn't really check my graphic settings, so it's not on very high. Uh, I apologize for that. I mean the the quality of vid should be HD, but as you can see, there's no people in the stands and stuff, and the Rebel looks a bit awkward. Uh, on Ultra, the game does look a lot better. I can run it on Ultra, but when I do it with Fraps, I get stuttering and it's very hard to race. So apologies for that. Um, this is the PC version, of course. Um, so everyone, quality. Um, one of the things you notice immediately is uh, you can break a lot later. Uh, it's not quite on it exactly, like here for turn one. You have to break on a light fuel load at the 150 meter mark, approximately. Um, 
while in real F1 they break at about the 100 meter mark, but it's better than last year where you had to break, uh, you know, way, way, way earlier. Uh, you can cut the corners much more, which is a bit of a shame, but um, yeah, you can get away with murder when it comes to corner cutting, uh, like you saw in that chicane. Uh, one of the fun things where CM did keep their word is you can attack the curbs. Uh, you won't automatically spin out like some notorious curbs were. Uh, last year, but the back end is much tighter. Ascari is really a challenge now. Last year, this was an easy corner. You were flat out at this point already. Here you can't, because the back end will start slipping and sliding around. Um, very interesting. Very interesting to drive. Um, if uh, you really care about the racing, and it's the racing you want, you know, to have a better feel for the car, F1 2011 is worth it. Uh, there you got it. You heard it. Uh, get the game. There's curves in DRS. You can see me pushing the buttons and everything. But yeah, the game is, is definitely worth it. Uh, if you like the improved handling. It's much, much, much more fun to race. And you see me. Three thousands of Hamilton's pole position time. Um, you have the race director feature, which we'll uh, dive into later, which is a lot of fun. But the handling is so much better. You have a twitchy back end. Uh, I've tried a couple corners that, you know, were easy, flat out, you know, no stress at all. Which here, you know, they're a bit scary. And there's the added uh, dimension of DRS. You know, certain corners, am I going to take it with DRS open, am I not, when can I open it? Because you really do feel the back end getting loose uh, if you're not straight. Uh, so here we are in P2, and that's one of the big problems in this game. You don't see it that pronounced here, but there's basically only a second gap uh, between P1 and P10, not even. And then there's a huge, huge drop-off once you get to the new teams. Look how close the times are. That is not right. Uh, it kills the immersion a bit because, you know, you can be two tenths of your time, but you'll be down ten positions. Um, and that's just not real. And here you see a huge drop-off from P17 to 18. There's like a two, three-second gap. Um, I think uh, it's because CM overdid the curse effect a bit. You know, they wanted the boost button. Uh, and it is a boost button, of course, but they overdid the effect. It's too much. Um... So it's going to be frustrating driving for the new teams, uh, but at least you won't win the Lotus in a, the WDC in the Lotus, I think, because um, you know, your car is inherently like two seconds off the pace, and uh, no matter how well you're driving, it's, it's going to be hard to catch up. Uh, I've only really tested AI on Monza. Um, I did that because a Monza is an easy track, so it's it's usually my tip for anybody starting in a racing game, uh, in an F1 game, start with Monza. It's an easy track to learn. Um, to track I know well, so I figured you know I have a good baseline that, so I did it on Monza. Taking mm. a sip, and here you see default race strategy. Uh, puts me on a three stopper. I was like, mm hmm, and the first stint on primes, second stint on primes. Like, huh, strange, but okay, I figured you know it's the default strat, and we're gonna stick with it, you know, and I'm not gonna mess with too much stuff, see how the Pirellas hold up. Um, but you know, in hindsight, I could have should have probably done a two stopper. Uh, would have been easier. You can't change how much fuel you put in. That would have been nice uh, if you would say, you know, I want to overfuel or underfuel my car, so I have to run in fuel saving mode a bit longer, but I'll be lighter, so I'll gain lap time in the beginning from that. You can't do that. You have a fixed amount of fuel in your car. Um, that would have been a nice feature that you could put in how many fuel laps of fuel you want. You know, if you're expecting a safety car period or rain, you know, you could uh, underfuel the car more. And then if it doesn't work out, you have to run the fuel saving mode. That, that would have added a nice strategic dimension. But uh, it was not to be, maybe for next year, but I hate it when people say that. We bought this year's game, you know, uh, can't just keep promising features. Oh, we'll be on next year. Here's seeing the Red Bull, that's one of the big things. The steering wheels are all customized, all um, cars have their own steering wheels, like in real life. You can definitely see it on the Red Bull because they have a little dash on the monocoque, unlike all the other cars who have it um, on the steering wheel itself. So that's a very nice feature. Um, so they did put a lot of effort in that. So that was that was good by them. Here we are on the starting grid. Uh, one of the things I was worried about, you know, you could still floor it. But no, you can't because the back end does get loose when you're doing that. You get a pretty bad start. So I push curse, trying not to lose too many positions. I'm careful hill, so I'm breaking at about the 120 meter mark. And I try to get into first. And I try and I think, yeah, I got it. And then boom, I see the two McLaren streaming by. I uh, was pretty pissed off about that. Didn't know how that happened, so that's why we have the replay. The replay system is still exactly the same as last year. It's bad. It sucks balls. Uh, I forgot to turn off the the music as well. But it, it's it's very bad. And I do a customary pretty bad Weber start. So I slam the curse. Uh, there we have a customary fast starting, uh, well, Rosberg this time, but a Merc. Um, and here you see, pay good attention to what the McLarens are doing. And a lot of cars, they're just cutting the chicane! 
I mean, yeah, it's realistic, but you know, at least, you know, Button and Hamilton should have got a penalty. They only at least Button. They only got ahead because they got the chicane. And I'm all goody two shoes, you know, staying in uh, my lane. Uh, penalty system does seem improved a little bit. You know, like I said, I haven't had massive amounts of time. Uh, but I remember I did an online race as well. I got the pole in the win, by the way. Did an online race, and the guy at this point actually uh, was also a Monza. Uh, the guy spun out, and I had yellow flags coming in. Um, and well, then that worked, but um, yeah, it was a bit uh, difficult. Uh, last year, you know, you would get an automatic penalty if that, if that happened to you. Uh, but not this year, so I just passed him. The guy was in the gravel. I passed him on the yellow flags and no penalty. I was like, what? It, it, did this just really, really happen? So, yeah, sorry. I had, to, I had to cut the recording here, so I don't know my train of thought anymore because I had a little phone call here. Um, but, yeah, you saw uh, the penalty system. That's right. The penalty system is a lot better. Uh, it looks like it. I haven't extensively tested it, but at least I was... I was fully expecting a penalty when I passed a guy in the gravel under yellows like you would have had last year. Uh, but I didn't. So woot. Woot for that. Yeah, that's, that's at least uh, well, one improvement I, I could have seen. I mean, I've heard people complain about that the penalties are still a bit fucked. Um, the car damage as well. As you know, I'm not, not really a big, big on crashing anyway. But um, the, from the damage I've seen, you can still bump pretty hard into the rear of other cars. Uh, without losing your rear wing, uh, front wing, or damaging the diffuser on the guy in front. Uh, I really wish they made, at least on expert mode, that they made the front wings very, very sensitive. Like, if you tap someone, you lose uh, bits of karma, like in real life, you know. It just needs a little tap. I'll break myself a little bit, but I still get on there. Um, it's, it's cool, because you can really feel the back end slipping and sliding a little bit. So, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to race now. It's... Much less, well, boring, especially 100% races, you know, they were pretty boring last year because you had a one pit stop and, you know, the AI sucked pretty bad on most maps, so. But here you see there's no obvious slow corners, you know, I'm, I'm having trouble uh, keeping pace here with Button. I'm taking it easy as well because, you know, high fuel, first time I'm ever driving on high fuel, so. And here this corner, here you see, whoa, catching the spin. No more brake slam trick, that was a good example. How you just, a little bit of counter steer at the right time and you can catch a spin. It's definitely not the fastest way to um, to get around the track. But it's a lot of fun, it's very realistic as well. And Vettel had a major power slide there uh, in Ascari, if you remember correctly. <laughs> that was a lot of fun uh, watching the, in, in the season. And now we're on lap 3, so as per uh, real life, DRS is now enabled. Um, so I think I, I switched it on already. You can see me going higher in the revs. Uh, and that's another big shame that TM uh, didn't implement that is park Fermi rules. Um, you know, that you can change your setup from quality to race. Uh, you can still do that. Uh, and it's a big shame because as we saw in Monza in, in real F1, it was crucial setting your seventh gear up uh, correctly. And, well, that just didn't, uh, didn't work out. You can still tweak your gearing and, and everything you want. So... That's a bit of a shame they didn't pay attention to that. Uh, I would have, I would have liked seeing it otherwise. But uh, and it can be that hard to implement. You just lock the setup screen. Uh, it can be that hard to code. Um, it's a bit of a shame because now you can have a specific quality setup with your seven gear because you can use DRS anywhere you want. So you'd be faster. You need more revs. But then in the race you need to compromise because you know you don't want to uh, be in sixth gear on the straight, for example. You know, so. It's a bit of a shame that Park Ferme rules isn't in, you know, CM, oh, we're getting a little slide. Like I said, Ascari really is challenging now. Last year was an easy flat uh, from that point on. Um, so, yeah, uh, a big shame, you know. Last year didn't matter that much if you could tweak your setup a little bit. This year it has a big impact, uh, of course. Um, you know, for wet races as well, you could look at the weather report. Here we are, first DRS pass ever I did on F1 2011. And it is easy. <laughs> Look at that. Just sail right past him. Like in real life, basically. Seventh gear is long enough. So that's in P2. Um, as you can see, the AI performance. Uh, a bit strange. Here we're going to watch the replay. But it's a bit strange that the two McLarens are up front and Vettel qualified in P7. Um, you would think they would uh, at least you know, get performance a bit right with the season. I mean, it was clear for everybody to see, even early on in the season, that Vettel was you know, right on top of it. Here you see the DRS open, pretty nice, so we just sail by. Nothing too fancy, of course, not a, not a great pass, but, um, you know, it's fun at least. Um, there we go, back on uh, back on track, uh, chasing Hamilton now for P1. 
So yeah, the DRS is it's fun. It's fun playing with it in qualifying. It's really a lot of fun. The quality laps, you know, just finding the limits, uh, finding the best points to use your curves as well. Uh, it's it's critical in my opinion. You know, that's what they always say in real F1. Of course, curves doesn't really take uh, that much effect as starting from third gear. So on out of slow corners, don't push your curves right away. You're still in first gear. You'll have wheel spin and everything. Uh, put it in. I think it's most effective between like third and fifth gear. So push it uh, from third to the end of fifth gear. That's usually the best part. Here at the exit of Ascari as well, it's an important part. I usually make sure I still have a uh, juice left here, so I can you know, press the curves a bit. Yep, there you can see it. Pressing some curves. Uh, on cockpit view, you can see on the dash uh, right next to where my gearing is. Now it says P2. But uh, when you use the curves, you see how many kilojoules you have available. You got 400 as a full recharge. Um, in in TCAM mode, you have it a bit easier. Here, it's useful, less useful, but a little boost the uh, curves if you have some left here out of the exit of the Parabolica. So that's a lot of fun to play with curves in DRS. Yep, there we go. We got the DRS wide open, catching up to Hamilton, trying to get him in the braking zone. Are we going to get it? Ooh, but we cut the chicane. And look, no penalty. But since I'm a fair play, even against the AI, I give the spot back. But in 2010, you would have gotten an instant penalty for that, for corner cutting. Although, I'm not sure because I was ahead by the time I cut the corner. So, maybe, you know, it's still in. But at least I, I was fearing a penalty here. So, at least I didn't get it. That's, that's, that's fun. You know, good stuff. And you go, trying to get him on a braking. But I just outbreak myself a little bit. Can't make the chicane. You see the little wheel lock up. Um, which is fun, you know, the lockups uh, do have a trail of smoke. They don't seem to have much effect. I was really hoping you would get uh, flat spots and stuff, so you'd get more vibrations, car would get harder to drive, but uh, eh, not really. Um, and as for durability, I'm, I'm a bit torn on that. The Pirelli seem to hold up very much. I haven't really tried running one set into the ground either. Like I said here, I'm just going to stick to the recommended strategy. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's flat spotting doesn't seem to happen, um, you know, which would have been important, you know, you would have been more careful on the brakes, you have button on our ass, we're in a McLaren sandwich here, of course, uh, we're gonna have another DRS twist, so here's just point of trying to get as close as possible to Hamilton, uh, you know, using a lot of curves, you can see I saved up quite a bit of my curves to make sure I'm in the one second zone here, uh, on the detection zone, which I think is, you know, somewhere here in Parabolica there, that's that line, probably, uh, DRS isn't exactly right, but you can't blame Codemasters for it. Uh, no way they could have known on time. Here we use last of my curves, add a little bit of extra. Boom, the rear wing pops open. There we go. I changed something on the wheel. I don't remember what, but we were close enough. And we can have a nice, well, nice DRS pass. Yeah, change of position. Can't really call it an overtake. And this time we do get the chicane right. And it's P1, baby, P1. Using a bit of curse. Trying to pull away from Hamilton, make sure he doesn't get us on the, the RS zone. So in one lap, I'm going to need to... Oh, I put it on high fuel mix. That's why I was trying to overtake. That's what I did. Bam, seven tenths off my best time and six laps in my stint. So that's a bit weird because, you know, the Perel is supposed to drop off. Uh, and I'm actually, you know, gaining a lot of time. Of course, this was a DRS started lap. So you would expect uh, some changes. But, uh, ooh, go a bit in the grass. Um, tire effects, yeah, tire wear isn't modeled very well. Um, you don't see, you know, blisters forming or, or wear that much. Uh, you do see when you go in the grass or in the gravel. And uh, Hamilton, bam, right on my ass. Yeah, I, I had a bit of editing cock up. Sony Vegas was fucking up, so there might be little moments of black screens. Um, so don't worry about that. Sony Vegas was being a bitch, basically. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm la lap six, lap seven is my pit stop lap, and I'm still posting quicker laps. Um, so that shouldn't really be possible. You know, these tires should be pretty much shot by now. Uh, which, you know, they aren't really. Um, it's not like I feel they're going off the cliff, but you'll see uh, a bit later that there is a bit of change. My best lap here, you see, that was actually compared to last lap. It's your pace. I was actually <laughs> fucked up by that. So I am actually um, six tenths down on my best lap. So tires are dropping off a bit, but the pace you see, and that's pretty useful, it compares uh, your sector times and full lap times to your last lap. So you can see how well you're holding up. Of course, sometimes, you know, you have a little spin or something, or you're stuck behind a car, it'll, you know, skew your pace. But um, it's nice. The timing seems all right, at least in uh, against the AI. And online, I found a bit of wonky stuff in the timing. I was doing that online race, and at some point, it says you're 30 seconds ahead of P2. 
But then when I crossed the line, and I did take it a bit easier on the in-lap, but the time I crossed the line and I saw the final standings, he was 10 seconds behind. And when I was looking behind me, here you see it getting loose a bit. So I'm like, hmm, tires may actually be shot. Um, so who knows? Yeah, like I said, Sony Vegas was being a bitch. So a little bit of weird editing. Uh, editing cuts. So we jumped ahead a couple of laps here uh, to lap 9. Actually, my pit stop lap was lap 7, but I figured, oh, right, keep going. Oh, my God. I should have lost my front wing here. I didn't. Like I said, the scar is really a challenge now. Uh, so here is where my race goes. All right. Look at that. Lost one, two, three positions already here. Whoa, exiting too fast. And I'm like, I may have hit the cliff, actually. Um, it's a bit unpredictable because in some corners you do still have grip, but I was feeling it here on uh, corner exit. Uh, had a little pause as well to, like, compose myself. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. Fucked it up. Damn it. So I'm like, okay, okay. Better, better jump into the pit lane. Uh, so let's see, and I'm not jumping into the pit lane. <laughs> I'm basically trying uh, to make these tires last a bit. I probably should have jumped into pit lane. That's 10 seconds lost on my previous lap time, so that's not too great. Here we did cut a bit ahead, 11th uh, lap. Um, oh no, it said, did it say 12th lap my first stop or 6th, 7th? I don't remember actually. Uh, this might just be, I think I stayed out a bit later than I was supposed to, but I'm, I'm not sure anymore at this point. So at this point, uh, we're in P4, uh, Rosberg behind us, and that's someone in the pits here for his first uh, stop, lap 12, that is my pit stop lap, uh, the engineer, forgot to talk about the engineer, but it is much improved, much, much better, uh, much more reliable information from him, and here, look at this, I go over the curb, get on the power a bit too quickly with a bit of worn tires, and bam, another mistake, I know you're not used to that from me, but... Uh, cut me some slack. First hours on the game, of course. Um, testing the tires a bit. So that's another spot gone. Uh, Rosberg ahead, of course. Someone, uh, someone of McLaren spit it, so he's still in P4. But uh, that leaves Rosberg ahead of us. Uh, Kobayashi in P5. Mm, yeah, uh, a bit dodgy, like I said, the AI performance. Um, but yeah, the race engineer is much better. He's not that annoying little twat he was last year. I think it was like an inside joke at code. He's given like a Gordy accent. Uh, and, you know, just talk sense. I think Codemasters must have found that pretty funny. Not to have a guy... It sounds a bit like uh, the McLaren race engineers. Uh, <laughs> so we cut a bit ahead. And bam, first pit stop. So let's see where it goes. Bam, you can just go flat on. And the car, you know, will break by itself. Don't need to brake for your pit box. No more slamming over the guy. You can see they didn't do any work on a pit sequence. It's still exactly the same. And this is major. No more pit stop bug. You saw it released me right in front of those. That's a oh, major relief. Major, major relief. Uh, that was one of the game breaking bugs in F1 2010. It was the pit stop bug. So I'm very excited that uh, CM finally fixed that. Uh, really a game breaker. Um, so many times I restarted races or had races ruined by this uh, pit stop bug where the lollipop guy just wouldn't let you go until all the field streams you buy in the pits. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really happy that uh, Codemasters fixed that. You see the HUD. Um, you can see how, how you're standing on fuel. So I ran a bit on the lean mix. Um, you can see here, you can see me running on the lean, see when my next stop in 29th. And if I would pit now, I would rejoin in 19th. So you get a lot more information about the track. Uh, so that's, that's useful at least. Um, it's a little bit dodgy that my recommended strat was put me on the primes right away. I mean, it has worked for Weber <laughs> this year, getting the primes out of the way quickly because he had bad starts, which basically is my case as well. So we jumped ahead quite a lot of laps, um, trying to lap some traffic, which is dodgy. Here's my buddy D'Ambrosio, Jerome. Um, they don't always really get out of the way soon. Sometimes they start zigzagging and you don't know which way to pass them. Uh, so I lost a bit of time here having to take the inside line. Um, so, yeah, the AI, it's an improvement. I mean, you can see they have good pace. If this was F1 2010, I'd be 30 seconds up the road, even with those mistakes. This is an important point to use your curse as well on the run down to uh, Ascari. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit strange lapping back markers. They're unpredictable. Maybe with time, you know, you'll get used to it. Um, you'll predict them better, but in the beginning I find it very weird. So here, you know, okay, going on the inside. Yeah, a bit uncomfortable, you know. Um, they do get out of the way, especially in qualifying. Uh, they're still coded very strangely there. Uh, supposedly, they don't do simulated lap times anymore, so it's real. The cars you see on track are setting the lap times you see in the timing screen. Um, but I'm not, you know, when you see them driving and, you know, they're on an outlap, you're taking it easy. 
they won't pass you unless you like really go way out of line uh, but they will just slow down and stick behind you um, that might be abusable <laughs> if you're in a career mode you know so you're fighting uh, Vettel for the championship you just find him on the track and qualifying before he set a hot lap so nothing special happened here we were still stuck in P4 Vettel somehow got ahead uh, and boom that's our second stop of the day back on the mediums low fuel um, pit stops are still a bit slow 4.9 seconds that's a bad pit stop in real F1 and you see nothing really went wrong so it could have gone a bit of um, it's rare you see a three second pit stop I haven't seen one yet I think maybe we have one more upcoming um, and what's one of the most fun part here it's actually you know it takes a while to get your tires up to temperature so you need to really pay attention on these first corners especially especially here as I'm under pressure you can see here on the Celsius uh, meter here see my brakes are up to temperature but tires are still cold and in F1 2010 your tires will be up to temperature BAM in two seconds uh, here it really takes like uh, a good lap or so so that's why I'm keeping the HUD up uh, see if we can do it I think it takes about uh, yeah a good lap get your tires up to temperature uh, well they're not exactly up to temperature you can see my brakes still changing temperature a bit uh, I don't know, yeah, they look a bit too greenish, you know, lighty green, maybe they get uh, better green. The engine doesn't overheat constantly like last year, uh, but it's fun, you know, it really has that, you know, your outlaps are important, but you can't push it very hard because you'll, um, you know, you'll, you'll spin off, you can't push like you have uh, tires fully up to temperature. So that's a, a very good feature, that, that was well, very well done uh, by Codemasters. Another part that makes, you know, strategy more important. Uh, there's Hamilton. You can see the fastest lap in the race as well. The timing. Uh, you can see in the race director mode. See if there's any incidents or stuff. Um, I recall there's one yellow flag in this race. Uh, I don't see what's happening. Uh, there's stewards next to the track waving their little flag. So that's a lot of fun. Um, at least to see them. But like I said, nobody in the grandstands. Just a couple of flags. <laughs> because I had to turn my... Uh, well, I didn't really tweak my graphic settings. I should have probably done that. Um, but I just want to get my hands on the game, you know. I was so frustrated that the U.S. got it first. Um, so yeah, I put up a proxy and made Steam think I was an American. So I actually played it from release in the States a uh, day after or something. Till uh, CC0 on Twitter, you know, actually reminded me that it was actually that easy to, to get the game. I just didn't think about it. I was like, hmm, how do I do? And then just CC, yeah, why don't you just get a VPN? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, it's a major props to him for that. Um, good fun. Making me remember that I stopped being an idiot and used the power of the interwebs. Um, so I got to play it early. Of course, I'm leaving on Monday. This is Saturday uh, when I'm recording this. Uh, leaving for Nigeria. So, like I said, I'm new board. Should, should keep the channel going with videos. I'm trying to pop in my commentary. The blog will still be up. The podcast should still be up if Skype is any good. Which is good enough. So we'll still be podcasting with Matt. Um, Singapore, man, maybe have something in store. Um, I don't know, since I'll be flying and traveling the whole beginning of the week. I'm not sure if I will be able to podcast uh, with Matt. But in any case, there will be a Backmarkers podcast. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so we were still in P4. Nothing really happening. It was a bit of a lonely race, especially in the middle stint. Um, you can see the gaps to the people ahead. So you can see I'm 1, two, one, two fifty, uh, one seconds 250. Uh, behind Vettel, so we did catch Vettel here. Um, he's in yellow on the mini map. Uh, the mini map didn't change much. Uh, the three, I think that's a sector on the mini map. You see a three coming by. I think that's like the sector split timing. Uh, Alonso's in fourth. You can see 16 seconds behind. So there's no more of that bullshit either. We're in the one second zone. So boom, there you go. DRS button up. Uh, you can see when DRS is activated. You can hear it as well. There's a sound effect. You can also see the little green light blinking on the steering wheel uh, towards the right. The DRS button. So here we are, Vettel <laughs> holding this line, and oh, I am not maintaining the gap, Christian Horner this time. I'm going to get ya. But of course, I still have another stop to go, and I'm kind of fearful at this point that the AI don't. Uh, that they're just doing a two-stopper, which is weird, because then why would they put me on the default strat? Um, so yeah, don't trust the default strat. I figured I was just good doing this. Um, here the race engineer saying I've got a good pace. Here again, a bit of trouble, you know, with the back markers. Vettel's going to get past here. No, he's not. Yes, he at least... Oh, look at that. That's a bit ballsy. Didn't want to take Vettel off, so I was uh, careful down there. Used a lot of curves. Saved it up a bit for the end of the lap. Um, so, yeah, that's that. And look at look at what Vettel's doing. That was weird. He's like, you know, <laughs> trying to push him out of the way. He's like, get out of my way, fool. Uh, leave room in the scurry, Vettel. Leave room in the scurry. <laughs> he was bobbing and weaving down there. Bam, another slab of DRS. So we're close enough here. Should be able to get him in the DRS zone. 
Uh, but I think I have a, another pit stop upcoming, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, at least we have another good battle. Um, online, I don't know, maybe it was me, maybe it was my, my connection being saggy, but... Um, you've seen me record online races in 2010 without any issues, no lag, no people hopping around too much, you know, it happens sometimes. But on my online races, there was ton of lag i was trying to overtake a guy on the straight but he was just skipping ahead and back and ahead and back and ghosting i had no idea where to place my car not to ram him off and it happened on multiple occasions on my online so i don't know maybe you know the, um, uh, the connectivity isn't very good uh or it, maybe it was a hiccup on my system it's possible but um yeah i hope it's not like that for everybody because it makes it impossible to race wheel to wheel uh i had like three or four battles with different guys and they were all very laggy, um, so very difficult. You know, you don't know where to put your car if the car ahead keeps jumping back and forth, you know. You don't know if you got the corner or not, if you're on the inside or if you're basically still ahead or behind. It's very hard to know. Now, like I said, don't know if it's fault with the game or with my hardware, um, but but it was a bit strange. And here, Bam Liuzzi, you should let me pass, Liuzzi. So here you see you can get away with murder on corner cutting. Uh, that was a very big corner cut. And, you know, on the mediums, getting ahead of Vettel quite a lot. You know, that's definitely a 1.7 second gap. So we won't be using DRS. Uh, and we're back on the podium. Woot, woot. I don't know where Button is. Maybe that's Button ahead. Uh, we'll see on the split screen. So that's fun that you have sector times. Oh, a lot of people were asking for that last year. Um, I passed it over on the qualifying screen. But in the pits, you can actually see your... Um, uh, 1.7 seconds, that is button ahead. You can actually see your, what was I going to say? Oh, your third sector time. So people will enjoy that. A lot of people were asking for that last year. Third sector times, why can't I see my third sector? I want to see where I'm losing time and not. Uh, so you can't see that this year. That's a lot of fun. Excuse me, took another ship. And in race director mode, I think I'm going to cut through it near the end of the race. Race director mode, you can actually see your... Um, uh, the lap times of every car, you know, you can click on them and see, you know, what lap times they were doing, their stints. Um, you can also see which incidents happened. Um, so it's fun. At least you know what happened to somebody. It's a shame the replay system isn't better. That, A, you have full races. Cause, and last year this was the same. Uh, it can't record 100% race. Like, I watched the replay for this. Like you saw, I, I had the instant replays in it. Uh, so I watched the replay, you know, went all the way to the end. And it stopped at around, I don't, you can't, I don't know the lap, but around 15, 20 laps in. So it doesn't record full races. Um, so that's a, basically it did, did nothing to the replay system. And that was a bit, I, I saw that requested by a lot of people on the forums, you know, improve the replay system. They didn't do anything about it. And here, this, this is one of my big, big shames here is the manual pit control. Uh, you can't even push your pit limiter anymore. It's just completely dumbed down. That's a bit of false advertising because they promised us we'd have more pit lane control uh, while in fact we don't. Yet, yeah, you have control as, you, as soon as you hit the pit entry and exit line, but that's not important. I want to judge my breaking point, you know. I want to train that in practice, get the breaking point right, break at the right time. For That's a big part in real F1, you know. If, if you break at the right moment, you stop right on your marks. Here you see again the cold tires, a bit hard, a bit eager on the throttle. Had a little slide, had to get back out of it, counter steer a bit, so that's a lot of fun. Um, you can also hear the curves having an effect. I don't know if it's like that in a real car, but you can suddenly hear like whoosh. You can hear it as well when you open the DRS. So it's attention to detail. And that's one more nice uh, touch CM added in. The engines do sound noticeably different. Uh, the Renaults compared to the Mercs and the Cosworths and the Ferraris. You do notice a difference in the sound. Last year I didn't really. Um, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, they don't really have the sound of um, the off-throttle diffuser, but the downshifting sound is a lot better um, if you focus on it a bit. You, you really like the click of it, and I don't know if it's really necessary, but I think you do need to be a bit more careful with downshifting and, um, and how much you rev the engine, because mechanical failures are in, of course. That's a lot of fun. I really do enjoy uh, that. Uh, they're not random, so it also depends on how you race. Like I said, if you downshift like a crazy motherfucker, uh, you might blow up your engine and stuff like that. Uh, I haven't seen a mechanical failure yet, but it's good fun. Here, Liuzzi, thank you for getting out of the way, you fuck. At least he's finishing the race in Monza here. <laughs> not unlike last time. So mechanical failure is definitely in, but... Um 
haven't seen one yet, but it's, it's a good thing, you know. Driving style does impact. Apparently, driving style impacts your tire wear as well. I'm not entirely convinced, although I did get a tweet by Kaz and a number uh, who said he tested it out. Uh, he did a uh, chilled out lap, uh, quality lap, and his tires were 99%. And then after slapped on a new set of tires, did an aggressive lap, and it started at 98%. So over a stint of a couple of laps, you could, uh, over 10 laps, you, you'd gain 10%. Um, so apparently it does have an effect, uh, which is cool, you know, because, you know, the Jensen Button in me will uh, enjoy that, or and the Lewis Hamiltons in you will uh, maybe need to adapt the driving style a little bit. Uh, that's what it's all about, you know, working with the tires. Uh, we're four seconds down on Vettel, by the way. We jumped up wide ahead in uh, lap 50 of 53. Uh, we see Vettel ahead, though. We have no more stops. My tires are fresher than him. Uh, the only way that message could have been any scarier, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he's faster and he's going to catch you. Well, we're going to try anyway. It's a bit, a bit of a Silverstone reliving. <laughs> 51 minutes, uh, 51 laps. Uh, so we're reliving Silverstone. See if Horner's going to come on the phone. You need to maintain the gap. Uh, that would have been a nice touch. <laughs> Team orders, <laughs> you know, in co-op championship. That, oh, I don't think that's in, but that would be awesome. Because in co-op, one of the fun parts is, you know... The guy who's performing better becomes a first driver. And just, you know, not that it forces you to do anything. But it would be cool if you're the second driver and you're fighting for the lead near the end of a Grand Prix. And then you'd have your engineer come on the phone, maintain the gap. Oh, that would have been a nice uh, winky <laughs> to reel up one from Codemasters. I don't think it's in. And it's just a detail. I'm not going to slate Codemasters for that. Um, but yeah, near the end of the race, the win is long gone. I think the McLarens are uh, way up ahead. That's one thing, um, you don't really see your gap to um, the leader. So I see I'm two seconds behind Vettel, but it would be useful to see how many I am behind um, Hamilton. Um, just for race strategy, because sometimes, yeah, you may be 20 seconds behind the leader, but you're one stop up. So, you know, you might want to stay in that longer or try to go for an undercut. Um, uh, timing is a bit iffy. Like I was saying, in, in online, the timing seems a bit screwed. Uh, I'm not sure if it is or not. I just had a one online race, but uh, test that for yourselves. Um, but overall, the game's a massive improvement. Um, you can just see it is basically an evolution of last year's game, but if you're a gaming fanatic and if you're an F1 lover, you're going to get it anyway. Let's <laughs> just face it, you know. I was a bit on the fence whether I was going to buy it or not. I should have been gone to Nigeria quite a bit ago, so I wasn't going to buy it anyway since, well, I'm not going to download 10 gigs worth on a 56k connection in Nigeria <laughs> so you know I was like okay I'll buy it you know, later when I'm back uh, back home to visit but um, no I didn't so here I'm having a lot of fun though I'm pumping in a lot of hot laps we're catching Vettel at a crazy pace 30 seconds ahead of uh, Rosberg uh, 1.6 seconds ahead um, it's it's a bit like Hamilton and Alonso this year as well you know catching him on the final laps after some uh, mishaps early in the race um, I don't know if I would have competed for the win without my spins I would have been, well, 10, 15 seconds up the road, I guess. Here, you look at how I cut that corner. Bam, no warning, no corner cutting. And the penalty system is on, you know, full. No, no reduced penalties or anything. Um, so it seems they've been too lenient on corner cutting. I can definitely see this being abused uh, by people. So that's, that's a bit of a shame that uh, Code Message didn't pay more attention to that. Uh, it's better than a too stringent uh, corner cutting system. But here I was basically all four wheels on the curb which is a very gentle curb here we have DRS final lap but we're too far away we can't really get him here in the beginning try to that's too optimistic I mean I need to give him the inside line here we try to like do a dummy but he has great traction out of the corner here Vettel and uh, gets away in front of me but I'm like yeah I'll get him in a scar here before um, so we're still pretty close still have a half a lap to go so who knows boom dive bomb but, listen, good to the engine. The engine dies. Well, not the engine dies, but I'm out of fuel, which was weird, because when I last checked on the HUD, it said I was on optimal, and now it says on minus one lap. Maybe I revved the engine too high. I didn't check the last five laps, because I was pushing like crazy, but I was on standard. And last time I checked, I was still on optimal fuel. So, your driving style does matter, and... I didn't run on fast a lot, maybe five, six laps, but I only ran like two, three laps on lean mix. That's a lot of fun. The, the fuel, um, the fuel is definitely into play here, and the AI seem affected by it. That's 
a huge part. The AI weren't really affected by fuel, noticeably the most on Catalonia. But here you could see the AI's lap time dropping as well. Here we take a look at the race director. So here you see the race incident. Bohemi got a penalty for corner cutting, strangely enough. Uh, if you click on the guys, you can see the lap times. Um, so it's pretty fun. Um, that's one of the bad parts. Apparently, you can't check race director at the end of the race. You know, when it's already finished, which is very stupid. Uh, luckily, we had a big gap to Rosberg, so we're in fourth. Uh, I would have liked to show you what happened at the end of a race. Uh, I don't think there's a podium ceremony. It's basically like uh, you saw at the end of qualifying. Top three are like, yeah, good job. And you see the finger. And Weber's ecstatic with fourth place. <laughs> yeah, that's indic indicative diff of his year. <laughs> see, the faster lap of the race was mine. That's fun with the race director. You just need to remember. There you see. You know, see the fastest laps in the race. So that's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, 46 seconds off the road from Lewis Hamilton. Um, so yeah, maybe Codemasters or McLaren fanboys. But um, yeah, though it could have been expected. Everybody thought Monza was going to be a good uh, track for the AI. Um, so yeah, this is uh, my last vid for a while I've made by myself. I want to thank you all for watching a lot. Um, thanks for sticking with me for all those years. Um, my final verdict, it's definitely worth buying. Just the handling in itself is a lot of fun. Um, if the online works well, you're going to have tons of fun. So it's worth buying it. Uh, it gets my seal of approval. Uh, it's really the handling that's the selling point. There's still a, a couple niggles, some stupid stuff CM did and everything. But uh, overall, it's a vast improvement uh, over last year's game. So make sure, uh, yeah, to pick it up if you get the money for it. Uh, nobody's going to be playing F1 2010 anyway. So hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, stay tuned for the blog and the backmarkers f onewordpresscom and the podcast and for the vids by Andrew Bortz uh, with commentary by him, Matt, and maybe a bit of myself as well. Until then, peace out, gents and ladies.